Wilmington. It's the 910 Podcast, and I am Frankie. And I am Shani. Shani, how was your week? Oh, it was good. It was good. Getting back into the swing of things. Um, enjoyed a couple good thunderstorms. Did cancel out a few fun events for the weekend and kind of put a damper on that, but week of itself was good. How about you? Yeah, I was uh, telling you earlier that I am having a hard time keeping up with the days. You know, I'm in real estate, so uh, sometimes my Mondays are Saturdays, and sometimes my Saturdays are my Fridays. So uh, it, it was a, a busy week uh, with with business, and uh, I guess you know personally too. You, you know, uh, I want to jump into some news. You know, we got a lot that we can talk about here locally. But, you know, there was a real big event that was happening that kind of had everyone on the edge of their seats. And I think it turned out pretty darn good. And that was the, the those kids were, were trapped in the cave over in, in uh, Thailand. And um, I feel like I said that we were Thailand, <laughs> Thailand. Uh, and, and, you know, the, they got them all out in the coach. And uh, I didn't know if you know this, but there was one person that actually died. Did you know that? Mm -mm, I did not realize it, that. It was one of the rescuers. Oh, gosh. I did say where they was transported a rescuer, but that must have been, like, early on, and I didn't see. Yeah, it, it was before they started getting the, getting the guys out. So, um, you know, that the, at least they got the kids out. And it's amazing. They did a great job, that's for sure. Yeah. He said, someone asked me, you know, how, how they get trapped in there. And, and how they got trapped was uh, it started raining, and the cave filled up with water. Uh-huh. So they were about two and a half miles in. So that was that was pretty crazy, uh, and, and you know it's sad for the for the person that did pass. But but at least the the kids got out. And um, so anyway, I uh, hate to bring us down there on that note. But uh, Shane, what's been going on in the news here in Wilmington? Um. Well, as far as local news, I don't really have a whole lot locally. But I do know that. Um, Starbucks has decided to go with the plastic straw ban. I know that's a big thing for our area for the sea turtles because those straws littering our beaches, they can definitely affect our turtles and really do some damage to them if they get them caught in their nose or even swallow them. Um, and Duke University has also announced that they are banning any plastic utensils. It's going to be biodegradable just like those Starbucks straws. So either you can buy the reusable Starbucks. Starbucks straws, like the hard ones that go in the turvy cups. So like you have your own straw that you reuse rather than the plastic ones that are disposable. So I think that's a big thing. Um, you, you know, to go back to the to the straws, uh, I noticed the other night here at Jack Mackerel's in Curry Beach that the straws that they gave um, were compostable straws is, what, yeah. is, is how it was described. You know, I think it was last year they tried a, a ban on straws for a week mm -hmm. and so i actually went on amazon and bought some uh i guess they're silicone straws and, and i keep those in my car in case i go to a place that doesn't have it because I, I do prefer straws right uh and, and i i guess that, you know the reason why is because i end up dribbling all over myself <laughs> if, I, if i if i don't have it and um and, and then also uh I noticed at the Dollar Tree, they had like a 25 pack of paper straws for a dollar. Oh, cool, yeah. So I, I bought some of those here in, in case that there's folks that are, you know, want to be conscious. I also have plastic straws here at the house, uh, but uh, I think I'll probably jump on the bandwagon and uh, stick to either the paper or the, um, um, the, the, the the reusable ones that yeah. I that I have. The problem with the reusable ones, have you ever seen them? Yes. Like they're like really uh -huh. thick and big around. It's hard so. to clean them. Yeah. Well, my, and the set <clears> that I bought was like mm, I want to say seven dollars from Amazon, and it came with like six silicone straws, two metal straws, and then two cleaners. Mm -hmm. so. I've got a couple of the metal ones, but to me they make the drink taste like metal. I, I don't know why. I just don't like it. I can't use them. I, I don't think I could do it with the metal, but I I, I could do it with the, the silicone. Except the silicone's bigger. In yeah. my mouth, so it don't feel like a normal straw. Like a, yeah, it makes it feel different. But I might just go to the Dollar Tree and buy some more of those paper, paper ones. ones. That's and, good. And yeah, that's a cool idea. Car. That's a cool idea. You get twenty five for a dollar. Yeah, I mean, especially with all the restaurants and all the tourism, and that that's huge. People don't realize how many they go through in a day in an area like this, you know. And then they end up on the sidewalk to blow them to the beach, or so. I, I think was, it's a good thing. Oh, oh absolutely. I, I saw one the other day uh, in the ocean. Oh, well, mm -hmm. it washed up on the, on the shore, and it was like one of those little bitty drink straws that come in the, in the short glasses. Like in your mixed drink, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so, and so when I saw that, it just made me go, oh, my gosh, these are actually do end up in the, in the ocean. Mm-hmm. You know, and I guess if you go to a place like uh, the Tiki Bar, uh, which is up in Carolina Beach and right next to, right on the water, then it's real easy for it to end up. Absolutely. Any of them that are right there outside like that, and the wind can blow it right off your table, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's a good idea. And so um, I, I'm glad that that's, that's, I guess it's catching on everywhere. And uh, I did see that Food Line today had a sign up that said, don't forget your reusable bags. Because every time I go in there, guess what I do? I leave mine at home. I have all well intentions, but I either leave them in the car or I leave them at home. Yeah. One of the two. I never remember to take them into the store. Well, well I went in today, and uh, I usually never even get a buggy. And so that's why I don't have a bag, because I don't think I'm going to need a bag. Enough stuff, yeah. I don't need, yeah. And, but when I got back to my car today, I only had one bag, but uh, I saw that there was a sign that says, don't forget your reusable bags, which I have them in the car. Mm-hmm. That's my thing. I just have to remember to bring them. And I never think of it until I'm like standing in line to pay. Wow. American Red Cross is in urgent need of donations. So anybody out there that can and is willing to donate, it's the time to do so. You never know when it'll be you, you're a family member that needs it. So it only takes a short time and it's for a very good cause. So I recommend anybody to go out and do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what did you do in the last week? You didn't really talk much about what you did. Did you do anything fun? I know everything I had planned got rained out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let, let's uh, let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, so we we were going to meet up on Thursday for uh, uh, the fireworks at Carolina Beach, and um, and and it was uh, probably about four o'clock. You know, about an hour before you got off work, and we were going to meet up, and then. Uh, the clouds started rolling in, and, and actually, uh, it was about 20 minutes later that they sent out a message that they were canceling the uh, the fireworks and the music and whatnot. So I know you were disappointed, but you know our intentions are to, to record every Thursday, and, and we'll go to, to that event and and uh, record somewhere down there. Or we always or have here. this Thursday. When's the last time you've been to Carolina Beach on a Thursday? Uh, it's been a really long time since I've been on a Thursday. Yeah. Usually it's been the weekend, either during the day or the evenings. I honestly hadn't really been down here since I ran the race St. Patrick's Day. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's been a while, yeah. yeah. So. Well, um, I don't know if they still do it. I was down here on a Thursday, maybe two weeks ago, and um, I didn't watch very much when the band was on, but there are a group of uh, older folks, and I say older because they're older than me, but uh, they are older, and they um, always line dance. Oh, cool. And it's too fun. I, I don't care what the song is. They're out there, and they line dance. And they'll line dance a song, and then take a break, and then they'll get up and line dance it. And, and it is uh, absolutely cute, and uh, I cannot line dance. But, me either. But it's, uh, it's pretty funny to, to – I'm a people watcher. Yeah, me too. That's so the best game. I, I love <laughs> to watch them and um, get out there and do their, their line dance into, like, you know – I don't know, uptown Just song something or, random, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you see them do like the same dance to maybe a slower song or something completely different. I'm like, man, they can do it to, you know, line dance to everything. Whatever, yeah, they make it work. Yeah, so I'm excited we'll be recording there on Thursday. So this podcast should drop on Fridays, except for this one, which will pop, I mean, drop, um, what is it, Saturday? So probably mm-hmm. I'll have it up tomorrow. Depends on how much editing that I that I actually have to do. And uh, so, what else did I do? Uh, one of my favorite activities, and I'll probably talk about it a whole bunch, is I went fishing. And um, I live uh, walking distance to the Curry Beach Pier, and uh, you can go fishing there for eight dollars. I feel like that's higher than what it was. Mm-hmm maybe a year or so ago. I uh, don't remember being eight, but I know that the Carolina Beach Pier is 10. Yeah. So maybe maybe it is right, but I knew that it was always cheaper, but I was thinking it was six, but maybe it's been eight. I think it might be 10 up my way too. So yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, and um, I usually go um, at 10.30 at night because if you go after 10 30 at night, you get the whole next day free. So, mm-hmm. so I use an app called uh, Fish Forecast that sort of tells you when the fish will be biting based on the uh, sole lunar uh, calendar. And do you know about that? 
I don't know a whole lot about that, but I do know that there's got to be some truth to it because with my photography, I go on the pier a lot when there's a full moon at night or into the middle of the night right before sunrise. Uh -huh. And the amount of older men, like the elderly men out there, amaze me. It's like yeah. <laughs> Grandpa will be up at 4 o'clock in the morning fishing in a heartbeat. <laughs> well, I thought this was all like some new information, <clears throat> but I started looking it up. And it's based on the sun, the moon, um, and they're in where, where they are and um, and the barometric pressure has this effect on the fish mm -hmm. and so I, I have found it to be pretty true except for at the pier where out in the ocean the it's when it's uh, like getting to be high tide so like an hour or two before high tide is when I have found that uh, the fish are biting the most regardless of you know what the uh, solar right know, says. And moving in or out i guess yeah yeah so it's just like usually <laughs> right before the high tide is is what i found to be best and what i've read that's what everyone else says so if you could find you know if you look at that the, the app that i used it and you see that it lines up sort of with the uh, uh the the tides and the and the uh, solar calendar line up then that's what i would think would be like mm -hmm. ideal time but for me I don't go out and try and catch a heck of a whole lot anyway yeah. because I wouldn't know what to do with it if I did catch something <laughs> right? new. So I just go out and goof off and have fun and, and um, you know. It's, Once you get it, a bite every now and then, you keep you occupied. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And as long as it's not too crowded, but, you know, you, you go out there and, and it's, to me I'm amazed sometimes that people will get, like, right next to you. Yeah. I just don't understand that. No, and and then it's like they don't Your throw straight tangle out. Up. Yep. I mean, what's the whole point? <laughs> yeah, they, and they don't throw straight out. They throw across you, and it's just like, oh my gosh. And yeah, so sometimes I'll just like wind in and sit there and wait for like uh -huh. someone to to get away from me. So, but that that is what I've done. Um, and, and so for eight dollars, I will get from ten thirty at night um, until twelve. The next night. The next night. That's cool. But I've never had anyone say, hey, it's time to get off the pier. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. They're not going to run you off if you're out there. You, yeah, but I'm sure that if I <laughs> left, maybe in someone Probably saw couldn't it. come back. Yeah, yeah. Just just like in the clubs back in the day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> had to slide the armband off and put it on your friend. Yeah. <laughs> so, Roll so. the stamp over on their <laughs> hand. <laughs> Taking it way back. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, that's what I've been doing. I absolutely love it. Uh, so I, I've got um, shrimp in the fridge, and um, I, I just, if I'm feeling the need, I'll go down there and, and yeah. do it and hang out for a little <coughs> bit. And sometimes I just walk down there and watch people. Yeah. And um, watch It's them get fun just to walk up. around and check it out and see what everybody else is catching sometimes, too, and not load all your mess down there. So. Yeah. So what about you, Shani? What do you got going on this week? Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do the food truck rodeo this Saturday. Um, I always love a good food truck. Uh, I like to learn about the ones in the area because I know that a lot of them have a page or an app where you can find out where they'll be throughout the week once you know the name of them to follow them or what type of food. Um, we have lots of food trucks in the area that people don't realize we have. So I think it'll be a best place to check them out. And that is Saturday at Popular Grove Plantation. Um, for 3 to 8 p.m., there'll be a folk band. There's 10-plus food trucks. They said like 30-plus arts and craft vendors. Free admission. Of course, you just purchase whatever from the trucks themselves. All the money raised will go to the equine rescue program there for the stables at Popular Grove. So it's a good, good foundation, good cause. Um, definitely always down for some good food. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. And, uh, you know, Poplar Grove has, uh, they used to have a, a haunted house. I don't think they had it last year. And uh, this year, I don't know if you saw it or not, but they are going to have paranormal ghost tours. Oh, that'll be fun. I yeah. want to do that. That'll be in uh, October. But we'll I have to do that good. one night of the <laughs> yeah, absolutely. podcast. Yeah, that, that'll be a lot of fun. So um, that starts in, in October when they're going to do that. It was weird because I thought that they were doing it now, but um, but I guess it doesn't start. I just looked it up on the web just a second ago. But it's uh, real neat that they um, are having all these events to try and raise money for the stables up there. Yeah, because it is a very nice area, and it's pretty, and they do have a lot of nice animals that you're able to go up there and 
tour the grounds and so anything to help keep them going you know they, they uh halloween every year they ha used to i don't know if they still do or not i don't remember going there last year but they did have like a haunted hayride which was real cool yes we did that many years with my little boy until he got too old to want to go with me and he started going with his friends so now i don't have anybody to go with <laughs> <laughs> and they did do uh like a haunted house in the actual plantation house mm -hmm. but it wasn't like a um it wasn't a very good haunted house i think one of maybe one of the drama departments from like the high schools put it on or something along the lines of that so it was a lot of younger children that did it too so it definitely wasn't very scary it wasn't like movie studio quality but it definitely was a it was a cute little thing they had each year with their haunted hayride and to raise money so yeah but but you know they're there i'm sure they don't want people running uh you know, <laughs> exactly in that old house uh, i definitely if it was mine and I, I, mm -mm. I, I wouldn't want it but uh so i'm glad that they are doing some different things to, to help raise some money because it, can, it can't be uh you know cheap to take care of all those horses and land and keep up that that old house um so anything else you had going on dan i know there is um if you like reggae there's a pretty good band playing at the marina grill tomorrow at one o'clock called foundation stone they do various reggae and they're pretty good just laid back good sunday afternoon music but I don't know of anything much else that I'm planning on hitting up this week other than your standard huh, working stuff. <laughs> you know, I thought there was one other thing that I had on my list um, of events. There is next Saturday as well a quarter auction at the Hempstead Baptist Church to benefit the Spot Festival Princess. Um, they, all the money raised will go towards the Spot Festival Foundation for the pageant and that's scholarships for the princesses as they win when they do have the pageant in September or August. Um, the quarter auction, they will have over 200 items. They've got some really nice stuff, all the different local vendors. There's, um, some like hair salons, different places have donated gift certificates. There's makeup, there's LuLaRue, all your local people who sell things have donated. And it is just what it is. There's 25 cent bids, it's a quarter auction, and all of that money goes to help for the scholarships for those princesses in that pageant. So that's a good local thing as well. That actually starts at four o'clock next Saturday. Uh, well, you know, there is, uh, we mentioned it already, but Thursday night down here at Carolina Beach is the um, uh, boardwalk and the fireworks. But also, I don't know if you knew this, but at Wrightsville Beach, they're doing uh, music on um, uh, Thursday nights, too. So at Thursday the park, nights, if yeah. you are up at that neck of the woods, you can uh, see live music there. Uh, and then you can also see it down here on Thursday nights. So uh, there's a couple of good events for you. Uh, you, so you got Thursday nights, you can come down here and see uh, the fireworks and the live music here with uh, Shani and I. And they, and they do have the, the carnival here at uh, Carolina Beach. I'm not sure how many years they've been doing it now. I know when I first moved here, which was 2005, that it wasn't going on. But, you know, so from Memorial Day to Labor Day, you, you do have uh, rides. And, and I don't think that they are that expensive. No, uh-uh. And we do have Brit's Donuts. Riceville Beach doesn't have anything remotely close to that. <laughs> so, you know, you could always come see us, get some Brit's, listen to the music, watch the fireworks. Yeah. Give us a shout out. Yeah, absolutely. And if you have anything going on this week, you, you can also reach us at uh, 910pod at gmail.com, 910pod at gmail.com. You uh, can also find us on instagram at 910 pod and we'll be taking some um, photos and posting on there of the things that we're out doing so make sure you follow us on, on the instagram and on the twitter and uh, shanny may where can they find you on your social media um mine is that shanny girl and it's g-u-r-l on instagram and um that's the best place to follow me because i don't really use much no more of the social medias as much anymore so I say check me out at that shanty girl on Instagram, or you can of course email us with any kind of tips or questions at our 910pod at gmail.com. We want to
hear from you guys any way possible, whether it be messages on Instagram or on that email. We love to hear from you and what your favorite events, what you've been to or are excited about. We want to hear from that, too. Yeah, absolutely. We want to hear your, your tips and your tricks. And, and I'll, I'll give you an example of some things that, that we hope to hear from you. So uh, a few weeks ago, I had started to go to the fireworks and uh, I had my niece Tootie here. And so we got a late start. And um, so we were going probably about seven o'clock and there was absolutely no place to park mm -hmm. for blocks and blocks and blocks. So, you know, uh, th that's a, a good tip that if you're going to go to the fireworks, you know, most people work, you know, nine to five or nine to six. You got to truck it to the beach if you're going to find any kind of decent place to, to uh, park uh, or else you're going to be going a long way. So we, um, we live in Curry Beach. So uh, she and I just came back here and took an Uber up to Carolina Beach. <laughs> the best way to do it when yeah. you're that close. <laughs> and, then, and then took one back and it was uh, about $6 each way. But uh, I mean, the, the other option was to drive around and drive myself crazy trying to find a spot. In the grand scheme of things, it was worth 12 bucks, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So those are the kind of tips and tricks that we would like to hear from. You know, what are you doing? You know, what are you out doing? share with us i know there's a a bunch of different places you can get your events online but what we hope to do is is tell you you know what we're doing and maybe you know call attention to some of the things off the beaten path uh that, that, that you can do i i'm a, a very frugal person so uh, i'll probably talk about a lot of uh, the free things that, that you can get out and do um and then as time goes on you know we hope to you know be more interactive with you and and uh, you can go to our Facebook page and, and you can share your events and talk about what you're doing and, uh, you know, keep it fun, happy and positive. So make sure you follow us on social media and um, check back at 910pod.com and uh, that's where you can get your latest podcast. Hey, um, one more thing. How's the market? Shannon, the market has been crazy uh, ever since about March. It has just been off the chain. And I'll just give two pieces of advice here real quick. If you uh, are looking to buy, make sure your realtor understands the market and, you know, make sure you also understand the market and that if you're looking at, you know, 160000 and, and below, chances are you're not going to get a deal unless it's going to be a uh, fixer-upper. And if you're getting a loan, um, a mortgage, then chances are you won't be able to get a fixer-upper. So anyway, make sure you are working with a realtor and they are... Johnny on the spot, and they let you know that, you know, probably what you got to go at is close to the asking price. And uh, because if you're at 160 and under, chances are there will be a uh, cash buyer that's right behind you. And then my other piece of advice is that if you're thinking of selling and you have a three bedroom, two bath, single family home, you want to get going um, pretty darn quick because the people that are looking to buy those homes um, are usually families and the families don't want to move while the kids are in school so uh, school goes back about the end of august so now we're in the middle of uh, july so they'll give you 45 days to close so i would say list it um, asap so this week or the next week and um, you know if i come out and i talk to you and you decide to list your home with me i could have it on the market the next day pictures measurements all that good stuff all done and you can call me at 910-233-0186. And if you have any general questions, uh, you know, about the market, about the, the rental market, or uh, about housing here in general, I, I know there's been a lot of people that are from my hometown, which is up in Mount Airy, North Carolina, that, that have, you know, said, hey, I'd like to buy a house down there. And I, and I say, good luck. <laughs> because, you know, especially down at the beach. Um, yeah. One of my friends while I was up there, recently told me that she had a friend that bought a house that was not on the beach but just across from it for seventy six thousand dollars and i'm gonna tell you that they, they might have paid seventy six thousand cash mm -hmm. and it was probably a foreclosure probably, so yeah but um it, got lucky. It, yeah it's, <laughs> it's tough it's tough here so if you have any questions about the market or if you're curious of how your house would do in the market you know, you can always give me a call at 910-233-0186. And you can find me on the social media, Frankie Secrets or uh, F Gives Back is my uh, Twitter handle and my Instagram handle. And that is all I've got. And that is the market. Shane, what, what do you need to plug before we go um, here? Just our general um, Mermaid Kisses photography. Always there to do any kind of family portraits, newborn, maternity, 
wedding announcements, engagement photos, senior photos, pretty much anything you can think of, we will come and take pictures for you. So that's a good spot. You can find them on Facebook under Mermaid Kisses Photography. You can reach them at 910-231-8609. And of course, this time of year, it does book up quickly on the weekends and in the evenings for those sunset photos. So make sure you contact us as soon as possible if that's something you want to do. Try to make your appointment get scheduled in. Um, keep in mind that even though we live at the beach, that is not all we do. There are many, many places around town, especially in our historic district, that are very, very nice for photos. Um, sunset photos downtown are amazing, especially some of those little cobblestone walkways and the alleys. So anything you can think of, we will certainly be there to photograph it. It's Mermaid Kisses Photography on Facebook. Awesome. Well, thanks. We will see you all on social media, and we'll see you back here next week uh, at the 910 pod. What's up, Wilmington? What's up, Wilmington? <laughs>